Hello, my name is Kevin Pires. I am a Senior Technical Sales Specialist with Expo, and today we'll be going over the setup of RFC 6349 using the FTB 730G version 2 platform from Expo. Keep in mind, we have a universal interface when it comes to our transport and datacom products. So the interface that you see here on the screen today that I'll be going over will be very similar going across our different products. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the transport datacom module. So in this case here is the NetBlazer. So I'll launch that. Once the application is started, you'll see that we are in the test application screen. So depending on the different options that you have, you might have different icons on your screen. So for this particular one, we'll be running RFC 6349, which is right here in the center. So I'll go ahead and launch that. And to give you an idea of my setup, I essentially have this 730G version 2 uh, plugged in with a 10 gig SFP plus optic. And I have two LC jumpers running from that optic over to a second test set, which is in an FTB4, and it is in FTBX8880. Um, so we'll be testing head-to-head -head between the two different products. So now we're in the RFC 6349 screen. You'll see we're in the test configuration tab here. And this gives us a high-level overview of how we have it set up right now. So looking here to the left, you can see that we have port 1 enabled on the RJ45 electrical 10100-1000. So again, in this particular case, we are doing a 10 gig Ethernet test. So I'm going to go ahead to the top here and modify the structure. And I will drop this down to 10 gig LAN. And I am using port 1 SFP+. Plus. We have the option to use port 2, but traditionally we use port 1. I'll go and hit OK. The structure will be modified, and then we'll see that now we have port 1 SFP plus enabled, and we have it set for 10 gig E LAN. You'll notice down here that we have a loss of signal uh, because the far end is not configured yet for 10 gig Ethernet. So I can do that now if we wanted to. So on the far end, we have another device. And so I'll go ahead and log into that device here, and I'll fire up. RFC 6349 and so you'll see on the far end unit we have it set for electrical on the port so I'll go ahead and modify structure on this device too so essentially this will be the far end site so we need to make sure that the optics or the test ports match so in this case here we need to switch it to 10 gig Ethernet so I hit the modify structure button So once that opens up, you'll see that it'll be very similar to the far end, or the near end, rather. So we'll drop this down and change it to 10 gig Ethernet. So we go ahead and select that, and then hit OK. And we'll, you'll see that we're still on port 1 SFP+. Plus. And because I already have the optics connected with just the uh, LC jumper, you'll see that we instantly have link here. So right now we have link between the two devices. Uh, certainly you can set these up independently and then plug it in and then start your testing. But in this case here, I already had it plugged in. So we have our link between the two devices. So this screen up here right now is the far end test set. So you'll see that we have it set up for 10 gig LAN. And if you look at the summary screen, you'll see the IP is set for 10.10.28.38. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave it there because that's the IP address range that I want to test in this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my, my local unit. So here we are on the local unit. It looks very similar. But you'll see the IP address range is a little bit different. So we went in there on the local unit and we set the optics for 10 gig LAN. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this magnifying glass in the top right corner to expand this window, and this will allow us to configure the port 1 settings. So you'll see right now under the interface tab, you'll see the different frequencies, the power ranges. And so this is some interesting bit of information here. So you'll see that the receive and transmit power is here, 
and we're sitting at about a neg 4.4 dBm. We can pull the power range off the SFP information. So the power range for this particular SFP is minus 14.4 to 0 0.5 dBm. So very interesting and useful information there. In fact, you can get all of this information from this SFP plus tab. You'll see the, uh, the actual vendor name, the part numbers, and the supported uh, protocols and speeds here. And so you'll see the different options here. And so we'll, we'll, we will be doing 10 gig Ethernet. So you'll see that is supported. So, you know, going back to the interface tab, again, just to kind of show you what we have here, the laser is on by default. You can have it start off if you'd like, but by default, we have it on. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the network tab in the bottom here. And we're still working in port one. And this is where I can start setting up some addressing. And so in this case here, we're going to use the factory default MAC address. And so this is typically what we do. You can assign your own MAC address if you would like, but typically we use the factory default, which is unique and registered to this particular hardware. If you're doing DHCP, you can check that. In this case, we're not. In this case, we are testing in a 10.10 .10 range for this demonstration. And so this is a very important bit of information that you need to know is, you know, exactly, you know, what sort of network are you testing? Uh, what IP addresses do you need to configure for the test port? So this is the IP address for the test port on my local unit. I'm going to set it for 10.10.28.48. And so the far end IP address was 10.10.28.38. Um, and so I'm just going to pick an IP address within that subnet range. So this is very important. If you're in the same subnet, you need to put in this, the, the appropriate IP addresses. And so you'll see the mass that I have set here. I believe on the far end, it was set for 255, 255.0.0. Uh, in this case here, because the first three octets match, we should be all right. And so that's what I have it set for. If there's any sort of default gateway um, or VLAN tagging, that you need to set, then you go ahead and set those in here as well. For this demonstration, we're keeping it simple. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And so essentially what we've done is we set the test port for 10 gig Ethernet and we've set the IP uh, for the test port to the appropriate IP address that is required for this particular test. And I'm only testing across the jumper in this demonstration. Um, so IP address is fairly, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fairly uh, transparent as far as there's no address aware devices in between. Uh, but it is important to understand that when you're testing RFC 6349 in an active network, that you need to know what IP address to input for the source and destination for this test. So in this case here, we're using the dot 48 address. So the next window to the right here is the RFC 6349 setup and connection. So I'll go ahead and expand that. And then in here we have all different options. If you have the appropriate option, we can also test to one of our uh, Expo Works devices, like the BV3100, if it has 6349 option in there. Um, so most testing that we see today is dual test set. So go ahead and select that. And in this example, that's what we're doing. We're going to do a dual test set. And we're going to do it bidirectionally. We can also set it up for local to remote or remote to local. And if you have a TC port, uh, TCP port you want to set, you can do that as well. Uh, by default, it's at uh, 5201. And so in this case here, we have this all set. I'm going to go ahead and discover remote. So this is going to find the far end device that we have plugged in. If it's within the same subnet, I can scan it and then it'll pull it up. If it's not, we can put in a specific IP address and then scan for that IP address to connect to the device. In this case, we are in the same subnet. So I will hit scan, and then we'll see the far end device show up. 10.10.28.38 is our far end loopback device that we're going to test against. And if we had multiple test sets, XO test sets on the same subnet, they would populate in here. So you need to identify the one you need. And you can see the capabilities right now for this device. So the far end is an FTBX8880. It's capable of doing smart loopback, RFC 6349, EtherSAM, and RFC, 6, uh, and RFC 2544. So right now it's, it's, it's set idle RFC 6349. 
I'm going to go ahead and connect to it. So it's going to connect to the far end device. And the far end device will go into a remote mode. So on the screen on the far end device, it will come up and say that it's in remote mode. So if I were to switch to it, you'll see that it's there. The remote unit is in use and locked for dual test. So this is what we see on the far end unit. So going back to my test set, we are connected. I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And now I can configure my test. And so in this case here, remember, we're doing a 10 gig Ethernet test. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean, or at least a 10 gig Ethernet port, uh, but of course a CIR can vary. In this case here, I have it set for 100 megabits, uh, but I can change this to whatever I see fit. And so if I wanted to do, say, a full gig, I could do that. So you see the maximum here. So I can put in that value, the max value. And of course, these are decoupled, so I can set them however I like, because sometimes you're your network is not symmetrical. So if it's asymmetrical, you can set different rates in different directions. So I'm going to go ahead and set it. If you have any type of servers or differentiated servers, you can put that in here. I'm going to go ahead and do multiple connections and then set the max MTU for 1500 as the demo in this case. So it's going to sweep through uh, every 30 seconds. It'll do a sweep. Um, and if there's any questions on what any of these definitions mean within any of these screens, you can always hit this question mark in the bottom and then it'll go, it'll open up the manual and then go to that section of the manual related to the screen that you're in. So you see the extra works and, and all that good stuff. Go ahead and minimize that. And so we are connected. You'll see the graphic up here that we are connected to an FTB on the far end. And in this case here, this is, you know, RFC 6349 is a fairly simple setup. So I can go ahead and just hit start to run the test. And again, this is just a simple setup. And so you'll see we go straight to the summary uh, tab within the results. So you kind of get a feel for the window here. There's the setup to get back to the setup functionality. And not, right now we're in results. The last option down here, functions, allows you to do some ping, trace route, that type of stuff. Um, but right now we're in the results tab. So we'll stay here. And then you'll see that we're running the test. And so this will run through and do its window sweep, and we'll start seeing results here. And again, if, if these terms are not familiar to you, you can always open up the help manual, and it'll give you an idea of exactly what this all means. And so now we're starting to see some results coming back from local to remote. We're doing an eighth of BDP. And then we'll sit here and let this run through. So I'll fast forward a bit. Um, you can look at the test time to see when it starts and stops over in the top right here but you'll see that it'll advance a little bit here while we let this uh, test run its course. Okay, so you can see as soon as it's done, you will get the generate report option here. So in this case here, I'm gonna go ahead and just click uh, yes to show you what that looks like. So this is what the generate report looks like. And so I can add any sort of comments, uh, job information, whatnot in here. So this is going to be a PDF. And so you'll see that right now, the file name is down here. It's just RFC 6349 with a timestamp. It'll save to my documents. And so I can go ahead and save this report as it is with all the content so I can filter this if I need to. But I'll go ahead and do all the content, which is a lot of information. I'll go ahead and hit save report. And then this will generate a PDF. And I've told it to open the report after it's done saving. And so we'll go ahead and it'll go ahead and do that. So this is what it looks like here. So it's uh, this particular one's about 13 pages. You can look at the test summary, the test results, uh, the setup, the whole works. It's in here. So this is the actual report itself. So it is in a PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the report option. If I wanted to generate a report after the fact, over here in the top right, we have report to save it, to generate a report rather. The save load option does not save the test. This saves the configuration for the test. So all the IP addresses and whatnot that I put within the setup can be saved as a configuration. This is not to save the results. This is only to save the setup. If you want to generate a report, you hit the report button over here. So just kind of looking at what we see here on the screen. So you'll see that we are getting some really good rates here. You know, this is a fairly simple connection. I'm just going over a short piece of glass, so I'm not going to have any sort of delay. 
So you can see, you know, eighth of the uh, bandwidth delay product and whatnot are all in here. Um, and so you'll see the actual rate that we're testing. Um, and keep in mind, this is a this is a layer four test, right? So we're not going to see full line rate uh, necessarily um, uh, from a layer one perspective, rather. And so um, this is what the res uh, the summary screen looks like. You can drill down deeper into what we're seeing here. So in the window sweep, you can see the graphs uh, based on you know the number of uh, um, connections that we have set. And so ideal and then actual. And again, the actual is going to be a little bit high because obviously we're just going across a piece of glass. Any sort of alarms, traffic information, so you can see the different frame sizes that were sent, and then a logger uh, that showed you the actual test. So you'll see that it started at 1037 and then ended at 1045 for this particular example. So that's it. That is RFC 6349 in a nutshell. It's a fairly simple test. Uh, you know, once you get the uh, connection to the far end device, it's as simple as configuring the test and then hitting start. And then uh, we'll start getting some of our results. So hopefully you found this information useful. Uh, my name is Kevin Pires. I am a senior technical sales specialist with Exfo. Um, and thank you for your time.